Uh, take your Bible, go to Daniel chapter 5. Daniel chapter 5. And this is a great uh, place to meet, and it's a little more casual. And uh, I didn't know what to do, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm insecure and I'm unstable. <laughs> and I admit it, you know. And, uh, but the Lord helps me, you know. Okay. So I thought, you know, here you got two guys today. They, they're, they got ties and kind of sport coats on. Two guys preaching jeans. So I got the jeans yeah. and the tie. Okay? That's what I'm doing. <laughs> what do you say? Relevant. Is that, is that, relevant. that's relevant? Yeah. What's that mean? <laughs> just, just, hey, just preach. Hey, let her go. Let's go. Okay, go yeah, we got a half hour. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> no nap. I had no, no nap yesterday. Come no on, nap today. Preach. Shut up. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and if I fall asleep while I'm preaching, <laughs> you'll understand, okay? I know you will probably also. All right, uh, Daniel chapter 5. Lord, thank you for what we're doing here. It's just a blessing, I know, uh, to all these people, to me and everybody. Uh, what a fellowship, what a joy divine we have. Just fellowshipping with you and one another, seeing uh, uh, others that are uh, fighting the good fight of faith. And God, help me today to honor you and to be a blessing uh, to these dear brothers and sisters, these children, and uh, may the message be a help to them and get us to think about some things. In Jesus Christ's name I pray, amen. amen. I want you to look at Daniel chapter 5, and I'm going to preach the whole chapter. Amen. And uh, anyway, uh, no, I want to just give you a preview of the chapter, and... Uh, and uh, you'll see, uh, and it's, uh, it's Belshazzar making a feast. You see that, and I want you to look at your Bible, and then I'll come back to what I, a couple of points that I have, three actually. And, uh, but you'll see in the first four verses, you'll see that Belshazzar, uh, the king of Babylon, he's the grandson of uh, Nebuchadnezzar, uh, which took uh, Israel, uh, Judah captive uh, ca into captivity, uh, some previous year, in previous years, and that's where the, they were, and Daniel's there in the kingdom there, you understand that. And he made a feast, and he uh, desecrated the vessels uh, 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 from the temple. And you read that down there in verse number two, and you can look at it and read, read real quick, okay? You can do that. And, um, and uh, they, they brought the golden vessels, it says in verse number three, and, they, and, and it was a, that was a dishonor to the things of God, uh, to the sacred things of God. And then you see in verses uh, uh, five uh, through uh, eight, you see how God was displeased with that. It did not please God one bit whatsoever. And you see the, uh, the fingers coming forth of a man's hand in verse number five and writing on that wall. And the Bible says in verse number six that the king's countenance uh, was changed and his thoughts troubled him. That would trouble me too, uh, seeing a hand coming across on the wall here and writing something. And, uh, and, and, he did, and then he, in verses uh, nine through 12, he sent for his wise men and his uh, astrologers and his, uh, his religious gang and the political gang, amen, and see if they could give some answers and just as reoccurred a number of places uh, in, the, in, the, in this uh, book of Daniel, uh, like uh, it, they couldn't answer. They couldn't give him the answer. They couldn't, are you following me? Yeah, they couldn't follow, uh, they couldn't uh, uh, interpret uh, the writing on the wall. And, um, and in verse number nine, and then when, when that happened, he was greatly troubled. If you'll see it right there, he was greatly troubled. And so, he sends for the queen, and notice I just want to see the, uh, give you this in passing. Uh, now the queen, it says in verse number uh, 10, uh, well, by reason of the words of the king and his lords, came into the banquet house, and, and she hadn't been in there previously. And the queen spake and said, O king, live forever, and let not thy thoughts trouble thee, and let thy countenance be changed. I said she hadn't been in there uh, uh, previously, you know what's going on in there. They're having a drunken orgy, okay? That's what they did. 
And uh, uh, some of the things I've even read about it, they'd get to a place where they'd just let it all hang out, man, and uh, strip down and everything. And the queen just, she must have been a pretty good woman and because she wouldn't have any part of that. And that's a lesson for you, by the way. And uh, she, she, she didn't go, she didn't uh, get in, she stayed out of it. And um, uh, even, hey, even in some real dark times, there's still some good people around. There's still some people that won't participate and take a stand. Don't you know she was criticized? Hey, Vashti was removed because she wouldn't go in and show off her beauty before everybody. Are you with me? And, and so she's a pretty good woman, but she has the, she has the answer. She knows someone. And, in, and you see that in verse number 11, there is a man. And uh, oh, yeah, there is a man. And of course, she's referring to Daniel. And uh, oh, yeah, there, there is a man. And he'll, he'll be able to take... Uh, uh, show you uh, the interpretation of what you've seen, that handwriting on the wall. And that's there's quite a need for a man today. Amen. There's quite a need for men in the day. Uh, and because there's a man, there's some hope, by the way. And, and so he, she says there's a man. And, uh, and, and, and so she, she describes him in verse number 12. Then 13 to 17, you see that Daniel in verse number uh, 13 was brought in uh, before the king. And, uh, and, uh, and the king tells them, hey, the wise men, the astrologers, uh, the professors, amen, the educators, the media, you know, the Republicans or the Democrats, or, they couldn't give the answer. And uh, as usual, okay, they don't have the answer. They fake it, okay, like they got the answer. You got the answer. I, I, I got the answer, amen. And, um, and so... Um, and so uh, uh, he brings Daniel in and he offers him in verses uh, oh, verse 17 or verse number 16. And he said, uh, I've heard of thee. Uh, he said, I, thou canst make interpretations and dissolve doubts. And he said, if thou canst read the writing and make known to me the interpretation thereof, thou shalt be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold about thy neck and shalt be the third ruler uh, in the kingdom. He's going to reward him if he can give an answer. But look at what Daniel says, and you see in uh, verses uh, 18, 17, 18 to 23, uh, look at verse 17 first. Daniel Daniel answered and said unto, before the king, this is a great chapter. Isn't this good? (laughs) Amen. I like, I like, uh, the first six chapters are really good. (laughs) Well, you get to 7 to 12, that gets pretty rough. So I won't preach that today. (laughs) You know, that's where I stop. You know, that's where I get my 20 years in, okay? <laughs> anyway, verse 17. <sighs> yeah, I'm retiring now. I didn't feel, you know. Anyway, uh, verse number 17. Uh, then Daniel answered and said before the king, Let thy gifts be to thyself, and give thy rewards to another. Yet I will read uh, the writing unto the king, and make known to him the interpretation. He says, give it to somebody else. He said, I, 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 I've, got, I've got the only job that I want. Amen. He said, I'm not looking for another church. Amen. I'm sticking it out with the job God gave me. That's good. That's instructional. Uh, uh, he's staying with it. He's not, cha- he's not going and getting a job, quitting and going and getting a job. Are you here yet? All right, now verse 18 to 23. And verses 18 to 23, uh, then, then he reminds me. <laughs> I like this part. And uh, this is a good part. Uh, this is where it gets good. I would have liked to have been a little birdie right over there. Amen. Uh, I mean, old Belshazzar thinks he's really something, but old Daniel's going to really chew him out. Amen. Uh, Daniel's going to take the opportunity. Hey, he takes the opportunity to sock it to him. Uh, I'll tell you what, anytime you have a chance to sock it to him, Suck it to them. Amen. Amen. Give it to them. I mean, all they can do is hit you. Okay? I mean, I mean what, what, what can they do? Amen. Uh, suck it to them. Anywhere. anywhere. Everywhere you go. Come on. Not just behind the pulpit. That's a, that's a, uh, it's easy behind the pulpit. Amen. Get out there and suck it to them. Amen. All right. Enough of that. Um, and so he says... He reminds him about his, his dad, his grandpa, uh, King Nebuchadnezzar, and what happened to him over there in, in, in the previous chapter, how he thought he was really something in the day. He thought he was really something, you know, and uh, he became a, like a jackass, uh, you know, and he, 
well, whatever, and had some long, that's what I say anyway. You can say what you want to say, and, and I'll smile, by the way, okay? And when I say that, and uh, and he talks about Nebuchadnezzar there, verses 18 to 23, and, and uh, notice what it says, and in, in just pick it up here in verse 20, went with his, uh, Nebuchadnezzar's heart was lifted up and his mind hardened in pride. And, um, uh, you know, pride, I, I wrote in my Bible, pride is God's repellent. Amen. God resisteth the what? But giveth grace unto the humble. You, 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 you ain't going anywhere and you aren't going anywhere with God and in your Christian life if you don't humble yourself and get rid of that pride. And... Uh, and so he says, but when his heart was lifted up and his mind hardened in pride, uh, he was disposed, uh, deposed, fallen uh, from his kingly throne, and they took his glory from him. And um, so you know that. Uh, you read about that in chapter 4. Are you with me yet? Yeah, yeah stay with me. We're going to be done pretty soon. And, um, but notice he says in verse 22, and he says, Thou his son, O Belshazzar, hast not humbled thine heart, though thou knewest all this. Ooh, that's rough. You knew it. You've seen it with other people. You know what God can do when they, uh, someone's uh, walking in pride and, and, and you didn't humble yourself. And so, and so, uh, so he, he socks it to him, you might say. And uh, then in verse uh, number 24 through 28, he interrupts himself and, uh, and, he, and he gives the interpretation of what's on the wall. And basically, uh, he tells them, and uh, I'll, I'll interpret. We've got any interpreters in here? <laughs> and I'll interpret it for you. Hey, your kingdom, it's finished, and thou art weighed in the balances and wanting. There's a judgment coming. Okay? And you're finished. And, that, and of course, that's what happens. Uh, that's what happens in verse number 30. In that night was, that night. That night, there must have been a siege going on, the, me, uh, the Medes, Medes out there, uh, Darius in verse number 31. And that night, um, uh, uh, Belshazzar was slain. What I want to talk to you about this morning is, uh, I want you to look at, back here to verse, uh, uh, verse number uh, uh, 6, where it says Daniel, or Belshazzar, uh, it says, Then the king's countenance was changed, and his thoughts what? troubled him. Notice verse number 9. And that, that was when he saw the thing. And then when his, 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 his uh, staff, Brother Murphy, his staff, <laughs> they couldn't interpret the, 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 uh, the, the writing on the wall. I mean, this is what you hired. Hey, that's what you hired him for to do this job. Yeah. Amen? Talk about job description. That's not job description. It's job descriptions. <laughs> Amen. When Pastor Blue, I work for him too. And, um, and, uh, and, uh, and, 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 and he really disappointed. Boy, I paid these guys. Well, I'm firing them. But anyway, it says in verse number nine, then was King Belshazzar greatly troubled. That's why I want to talk to you this morning, or this afternoon, tonight, by the time we get out of here. No. It said, what's bothering you? What's bothering you? Uh, you know, the things that didn't bother Belshazzar should bother us. That's what I'm talking about. And number one, uh, look at uh, verse, number, uh, uh, verse number two. And, uh, and, and notice what didn't bother him. He didn't, have, he didn't care that he did this. And when he went in there and he took those, those uh, vessels, those golden vessels, of course, you know when they, Nebuchadnezzar uh, uh, went over there to Jerusalem and, and tore it down, he, they tore apart the temple too. And they took care of all the vessels. Boy, that must have been a train. Amen. All that stuff. All the way to, uh, to Babylon. And uh, notice it says in verse number 2, While Belshazzar, while he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the gold and silver vessels uh, which his father uh, had taken out of the temple, which was in Jerusalem, that the king and his princes, his wives, and his concubines might drink therein. You know, it wasn't because they didn't have any. They had plenty of stuff to get to drink. And vessels to get drunk on. Amen. Uh, drink out of the bottle if you have to. Amen. And uh, <laughs> I mean, that's what some of you do anyway. 
And uh, then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God, which is at Jerusalem. And the king and his prince's wife's concubines drank in them. They drank wine, and pray, not to add insult to injury. He said they praised the gods of gold. Hey, our gods, the gods of gold, silver, uh, 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 God, uh, the gods of gold, silver, and, and brass, and, and wood, hay, and stubble, or something, anyway, uh, uh, of wooden st- uh, stone. Uh, uh, our gods are stronger than your gods. Our gods got more power. They're praising their gods. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and using the sacred vessels of God, the holy, vessel, holy vessels of God. Now, I want to see verse 23 because I've combined two points here. And um, notice um, in verse number 23, when he said to him, but you have lifted up hast. I'm just kind of adding a word here. So you, thou hast uh, lifted up thyself against the Lord of heaven. And, they have, and see, he, he, he talks about that now in verse 23. They have brought the vessels of the, his house before thee, and thou and thy lords, thy wives and thy concubines have drunk wine in them, and thou hast praised the gods of silver, gold, brass, iron, wood, and stone, which see not, of course. And not, nor hear, uh, nor know. And the God in whose hand thy breath is, and in whose uh, all thy, uh, and are all thy ways, hast thou not what? Glorified. And my first point is, uh, he was not troubled about that. He was not troubled about abusing, desecrating the sacred things of God and not glorifying him. And that, uh, listen, that ought to bother us. Yeah. Yeah. That Bible says, listen, uh, that Bible says, take your Bible, go over here first, hold your place here. Go over here to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Look at 1 Corinthians. That ought to bother us. Now think a while. Think with me. Very simply, it's not hard. This is not rocket science, okay? And um, uh, look at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Look at verse number 19. And, and you, you're familiar with these verses, but I want you to see them. And he said, what know ye not that your what? Body. Is the temple of the... That's, you, you, hey, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Yeah. Uh, uh, we're, we're, there's something sacred. Hey, God is in us. Yeah. Uh, these vessels are to be used for God amen. and God only. Yeah. Oh, amen. Yeah. And he says, uh, he says uh, uh, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, and you uh, which you have of God, and ye are not your own. Amen. He said, therefore, you are bought with a price. Uh, therefore, glorify God in your body. Uh, he wasn't glorifying God. He took the sacred vessels, the holy vessels of God, and it ought to bother us when we take this body and use it for unholy purposes. I didn't go over very good. Amen. It ought to bother us. Come on. It ought to trouble us. I mean... Um, when he's, I, I looked up a lot of definitions to uh, uh, trouble. They're disturbed, you're agitated, you're annoyed, you're confused, perplexed, distressed, bothered. That's the word I'm looking at. Frightened, distraught, shaken, shaken, in a tiz. That'll work. Uh, upset. Uh, we ought to get in a tiz when we take and use these eyes, this mouth, amen, and use them for something other than God intends us to use them. Are you here? Uh, I mean, how about your eyes? Huh? They're not to look at that thing all day. I got one now. I'm aware of it. I, I, I've seen too much abuse of it, of these eyes. I've abused my eyes. You've all... Uh, you, you, it can, whatever you want to say you looked at that these eyes should not have looked at. Or maybe you looked too long at this or that, some game. Some, 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 some just, uh, just cruising through, surfing. Let's go surfing now. Yeah, amen. No, and that's, but that's your theme song. Amen. I, I'm going surfing now. Everybody's learning how. I'm not. I don't want to learn how. Amen. These eyes belong to the Lord. Uh, listen, my mouth belongs to the Lord. My mind belongs to the Lord. Amen. You let your mind wander, don't you? 
Yeah. Oh, yeah, it comes. You start praying, man. Oh, plead the blood, brother. Amen. 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 Yeah. You started praying, and the way your mind, I'll tell you, something comes into that mind. And that's why you kids stay holy and you stay pure so you don't get a mind like I got. Yeah. Amen. Come on. 30 years lost. Yeah. Yeah. 30 years. And uh, I was going to preach to teenagers tonight. And then I was going to preach to the preachers. So I thought I'd preach to y'all. <laughs> but it's true. And you let your mind wander, and boy, I tell you, you put stuff in that mind, in that computer mind, and, and you, that ram and, ram and rod and whatever else. I don't know what you got there. <laughs> CD. Well, I don't even know the terms. But you put it in there, and it'll come back, and it'll come back right when you want to use it. Right. And you got to plead, oh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself up with spot up to God, purge your conscience. From dead works to serve the living God. Oh, God, uh, purge it. Get that out of me. Use your blood. Amen. Give me a blood bath in my mind. Amen. Yes. That should bother you. That should bother me. Use that mouth. Use your appetite. Amen. Some of you eat too much. Isn't that something to say right before dinner? <laughs> This guy, uh, brother, good brother, uh, he asked, how come you're so thin? I got the secret. I don't eat a lot. <laughs> I, got, I know, I know how you can lose weight. Don't eat a lot. There you go. Amen. And get yourself all tired out and all wore out and all... Uh, uh, just uh, using your body, using everything, God, this whole body for him. Amen. Now, secondly, because I'm moving right along. <laughs> uh, I want to see something else. First thing is that ought to bother us. Using this body. You know, the, 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 the over, I, I was in 1 Corinthians and you probably left there already. So I'll go, I want to go back. I'll read you a verse. Uh, the uh, Apostle Paul said, I keep under, was been mentioned here before, I keep under my body and bring it under subjection. Uh, I, I tell my body what to do. You got the power. Yes, yes you do. Yes. You got the Spirit of God in you. You can say no and you, uh, to, to your body, and, uh, and yes, you can, you can, say, you can tell it, to, shut up. Yeah. Stop it. And uh, he said, I keep under my body. I tell my body what to do. I don't let my body and my fleshly lusts and, uh, 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 tell me what to do. Like a dog. Amen. Amen. Amen like an animal. That's what an animal does. Yeah. He said, too rough on you, folks? He said, and I bring uh, uh, into subjection lest that by any means when I have preached to others, preachers, I myself should be a what? Someone said that, I wrote it in my Bible, J. Frank Norris said he was terrified of that verse. And be of no use to God. The Bible says a righteous man falling down before the wicked is as a troubled fountain in a corrupt spring. I, I got to stay with it. I got to keep my body under subjection. I got to keep these eyes. They're God's. I can't fall. I can't. Fall. I tell myself that. Why? Because you're looking at me. Yeah. Not that you're the wicked in the verse. But <laughs> some of you are. Real wicked. I owe it. I, I, what are my grandchildren going to say if I, if I screw right. up? Yeah. yeah, Grandpa. Yeah, he ran away with, you know, some 20-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> He ran away with the secretary, sir, whatever, you know. Hey, come on. There's too much at risk. Come on. It ought to bother you. And you let, it, let go a little bit, and a, 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 a little leaven leavens the whole lump. The little things uh, add up to the big things. Amen, 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 amen. So stay fessed up. Stay fessed up and stay right, and, or they'll lead to the big ones. And you'll be out. And you'll be a testimony to your children and your family. And are you here? Yeah. Yeah. Don't leave yet. We're not done. Verse 22. 
second point. And he says, in verse number 22, he said, as he said in verse number 22, And thou, his son, O Belshazzar, you hast not humbled thine heart, though thou knewest all this. You know, you know what, what God did to Grandpa. Grandpa Nebi. You know what he did. He got lifted up with pride. Is this not Babylon that I have built? Boom. Down came the hammer. Amen. And he said, you knew all that stuff. I mean, he knew it even before. Hey, he knew it even before Daniel reminded him of it. He's just reminding him of it. And, and God, you know what that is? That's God being merciful and gracious unto him and giving him a, some space to repent. And my second point is uh, uh, what ought to bother you and me is when we reject the grace of God. He rejected it. Because you know he didn't get right. He didn't get right. Uh, we reject it. God gives us grace for every situation. Amen. Amen. Uh, he said, my grace is sufficient for thee. Uh, he says, uh, listen, uh, you know, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the what? Grace. Lest the root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. God gives us grace for every situation. And uh, when you don't think, when you think you need it, hey, go to the throne of grace and to find mercy and grace to help in time of need. Yeah. Yeah. You know, my daughter asked me the other day, I was talking to Sarah. She says, how you doing, Dad? And because, you know, Jane passed away two years ago. And I said, I'm lonely. The Dennis Wells, his D passed away. I know he's lonely. But you know what gets us through and is going to keep us going, folks? Is the grace of God. Amen. I'm lonely, but I'm happy in the Lord. I know I'm doing what I should be doing. I'm going to do it by the grace of God till Jesus comes. Hey, uh, bother you if you... God gives you grace. I'm not walking around sucking my thumb, man, and feel, feel sorry for me. I don't want that. I don't want it. I like it. My flesh likes it. Sure, I like that. So do you. But I'm not walking around that way. God gives me grace. And I'm taking it, baby. Amen. I'm taking it. It's free. For nothing. Amen. And I'm going to take it. You take it. Thirdly, and I'm done. Praise the Lord. <laughs> he says, uh, the third thing, not only should we be bothered about abusing and, uh, and, uh, and uh, using our bodies for ungodly and just abusing our body and using it the wrong way, every member, he and not glorifying him, which we're called to do. We're called to glorify him. Who so offereth praise glorifieth him when you're singing. Amen. Uh, Paul gives his testimony. You know, you want to glorify God. Paul's testimony gave glory to God, and they glorified God in me. Amen. Give your testimony. Are you saved? Yes. Well, then give your testimony. You can give it anywhere. You ought to give it as often as you can give it to, you can give it in, in, in 10 uh, or uh, 20 seconds, you can give it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I was lost, but now I'm found. Amen. 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 I was blind, but now I see. <laughs> and Jesus did it. Amen. Amen. That'll do. Yeah. We open our trap for all this other stuff. Oh, right. Amen. 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 Yeah. Um, what's bothering you? I hope it bothers you. I hope it bothers me. I want it to bother me. I don't want to fail. I don't want to, I don't want to go down the tubes. Notice he says, then lastly, he says, um, uh, what ought to bother you? Well, it says in verse number uh, uh, 20, 27, it said, no, excuse, well, he, he gave him the, the, the sentence, verse number Tekel, 27, thou art weighed in the balances and found, art found wanting. And, uh, and you're weighed in the balance. The judgment's coming. And, uh, and uh, what ought to bother you is judgment's coming. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Are you a judgment-type preacher? Yeah. 
<laughs> Amen. Yeah. Um, he's coming. If some of you, if you're in here tonight and uh, you're not saved, you're going to be at the judgment bar of God, which is written down in Revelation chapter 20, and whosoever is not found written in the Lamb's book of life was cast into the lake of fire. You're going to be judged. All the dead, small and great, stand before him, and they were judged. If you're a Christian, most of us here, you're going to stand before the Lord Jesus Christ. That ought to bother you. I know uh, Brother Tim this morning, uh, I think he talked about He's looking forward to the millennium. And someone, and I don't know if he mentioned this, and I wouldn't want to contradict him, is that uh, I didn't think he'd said it. I didn't have my hearing aids plugged in all the way. <laughs> so, excuse me, son. And so if he was looking forward to the judgment seat of Christ, I don't think he said that. Did he say that? Yeah. <laughs> anyway. I want... I know. I'm looking forward to see the Lord, and I know he means that. He wants to see the Lord. Amen. So do I. But I just want it to be over real quick. And I don't want any of you in there. And I want you to promise me tonight that when I'm up there, you, you're going to go like this. How many will do that? What? I'm looking at you, too. <laughs> but about bother us. That pretty soon we're going to hear the shout. And we're going to be caught up to meet the Lord. What a day that will be. But then we've got to face him. And that ought to bother you. And you ought to get ready for it. Let's bow for prayer.